Hi everyone and welcome. My name is Abby and I'm the creator behind So Homie. I'm so glad that you joined me today because we are going through all of the steps that it takes to knit my most recent pattern release, The Arctic Throw. Now, if you have never picked up a set of knitting needles before, have no fear because each part of this video will walk you through everything that you need to know to hand knit your very own blanket. We will start with the cast on, which is how we get our ball of yarn onto our knitting needles. Next, I will show you how to make the seed stitch, which is just a stitch pattern that is made up of knits and pearls. And as a side note, once you learn the knit and the purl, that's all that there is to knitting. So you will be set up for future success for other projects. We will continue on to learn how to bind off, which is how we get our entire blanket off of our knitting needles in a way that it doesn't come unraveled. But the tutorial does not stop there. Since we're knitting such a large item, several skeins of yarn are required for this project which means at some point we're going to have to add a new ball of yarn to the project so that we can continue adding length. And I will show you one technique to do so. And finally, I will show you how to weave in the ends. And what I mean by that is there are going to be tiny little tails that are scattered throughout your blanket because whenever you add a ball of yarn, you keep a little bit of yarn so that your blanket doesn't come unraveled in the middle of it. So I will show you a technique on how to weave in your ends so that it blends in with your blanket and you won't even know that they are there. And as a bonus, your blanket's not gonna come unraveled over time. You will definitely wanna grab this pattern so that you can follow along with me in this video. And you can purchase my pattern from my Etsy shop or my Ravelry page. And I did also create a free version on my website and all of the links to these will be in the description box below. So let's get started. To knit this blanket, you will need the number of skeins of yarn listed in the pattern for the size of your choosing. Now for this project, I am using Lion Brand Wool Ease Thick and Quick. And unfortunately, this is all that I have left because I messed up on the fringe. Um, and I decided to record this after I knit the entire blanket, but this one is the colorway wheat if you'd like to uh, choose the same one as me, but they have a lot of different colors, but uh, you are welcome to use your own yarn that you already have in your stash. Just make sure that you check for a gauge and that you meet it if you want your blanket to be the same finish size as what's laid out in the pattern. However, it's a blanket, so it probably won't matter if you measure for gauge or if it meets it or not. Um, it's okay if it's a little bit bigger or smaller, but I'll leave that up to you guys. Also, you need a set of circular knitting needles, which look just like straight needles, except they're smaller and there's a cord in between. Now, you do need a size US 13 or nine millimeters, and it does need to measure 36 inches in length or longer. Now, circulars will be used as straight needles for this project, but you definitely wanna get a set of circular needles because as you're knitting the blanket, you're going to be adding multiple skeins of yarn. And as your blanket gets bigger, your blanket's gonna get heavier. Now, if you just knit it on straight needles, it's gonna really wear on your arms. So with circulars, as you knit the blanket, all of the weight's gonna be held in this cable. So you can just hold it in your lap and it just makes for a more comfortable knitting experience. Next on the list of materials is a tapestry needle for weaving in the ends and make sure that it is metal so that it glides right through the yarn. You'll also need a pair of scissors, any kind will do. And finally, a crochet hook size K or six and a half millimeters. Now, this is not actually used for the knitting portion of your blanket. This is how you attach the fringe easily along the sides. Now, I actually will not be covering that portion of the blanket in this video, and that's because I uploaded a separate video where I walk you through making three different types of fringe. So I'll link that down below and up top so that you can choose which type that you like the best. Let's talk a little bit about the pattern. So there are two sizes that are included. First is the lapgan size, which is the smaller of the two sizes. 
This blanket will measure about 36 inches wide by 48 inches long. And then there is the throw size, the larger of the two. And this will measure about 52 inches wide by 60 inches long. Now, both of these measurements were taken without the fringe. Um, if you choose to add the fringe, then you can expect, at least the way that it's written in the pattern, about seven inches on each side will be added. You will also see in the size section the A column and B column. And you will take these numbers from each column that correspond to the size and fill in your pattern accordingly. We will begin with a long tail cast on. So once your label is off, there are going to be two ways that you can get your tail and we actually need both of them for the method I'm going to show you to cast on. So the easiest way um, or the easiest tail to find is going to be um, just on the outside because this tail is just going to be, you'll just need to find it. It's usually tucked in somewhere. So find this end, but then on the inside of your skein, you can pull it, which actually I have it on this side. You pull it and there's going to be another tail. Now, sometimes uh, you have to pull out a big chunk of yarn and it'll be kind of wound up. Uh, that's totally fine, but go ahead and pull in there and pull some of that yarn out and try to find that tail because we do need both ends for this method. So what we want to do first is hold these two strands of yarn together and we're just going to make a simple slip knot. Now I like to do it where I hold the yarn in both hands. I'll cross my right over left to make a loop. And then with the yarn in my right hand, I'll just push it through that loop and pull that through and we have a slip knot. Now you do want to leave enough on this side to weave in at the end. You don't want it to be too short, otherwise your blanket has the possibility of becoming unraveled. So make sure that you do leave probably about six to eight inches for this. We're gonna hold the needle that has the slip knot. We're gonna hold the needle in our right hand. And I am going to hold the tail out of the way just so that we don't accidentally uh, knit with those because that would be tragic. You'd have to rip it out. You definitely wouldn't have enough. So I'm just gonna hold this together in my right hand. And with my left hand, this is how we're going to cast on or add the stitches to the needle. So with my left hand, I'm going to grab the yarn with my uh, three fingers. I'm just going to grasp it here and I'm going to leave my thumb and my index finger empty. So what we're going to do with these two fingers, we're going to put our fingers into the middle of this yarn and we're going to stretch it out. So we're making this diamond shape. And then we're going to move our right hand and left hand at the same time and I'm just going to pull down so that you go from a diamond into like a slingshot. Now what you should have is a loop of yarn going around your index finger and then you're going to have a loop of yarn going around your thumb as well. And then the yarn down here will be grasped in these three fingers. So again we have the diamond we put our fingers through the middle, we have a diamond, and now we're going to make that slingshot. So what we do to cast on, we're going to take our right needle, we're gonna stick it through the center of the thumb. You can see I'm going through the center of the thumb. We're going to use the tip of the needle to take that first um, strand of yarn that's going around our index finger, we're going to put that around our needle and then we're just going to pull that needle through the center of our thumb and then we can release our thumb and I like to put my thumb back um, on that yarn and just pull it tight well not too tight but uh, you're just going to pull it to where the stitch goes on the needle and it tightens so now we have it looks like three loops, but this one right here is actually our first cast on. The slip knot does not count as a stitch. So from here on out, we're going to use um, the count starting from the second loop on our hook. So I want to show you that again. 
So again, we're going to take our right hand. I'm just going to take those tails so they don't get mixed in and I'm going to hold it with the needle in my right hand. Next, I am going to take the yarn and go a few inches down, probably three inches or so, and grasp it with my last three fingers, leaving my thumb and index finger empty. Now, since we have the two strands held down from the needle, we're just gonna insert our thumb and index finger and make a diamond shape. And then we take our right hand and our left hand and we're gonna make a slingshot. Just pull that right hand down. And now we have the two loops going around our thumb and around our forefinger. And then we're going to take our needle, go through the center of the thumb, going through the center of the thumb. Oops. And then we're going to take that first strand of yarn coming off of our index finger. We're going to wrap it around and we're just going to pull that through our thumb hole. Let go of your thumb and you're going to have a big loop and then you want to tighten that with your thumb. So now you have another stitch cast onto your needles. And if you can keep the yarn this way, it's much easier uh, because you can just do it faster, I guess. So take your needle, I'm gonna show you again. Take your needle, go through the center of your thumb, grab that first strand from your forefinger, pull that through, and then release your thumb. Use your thumb to tighten it onto your needle. Now your stitches, you don't want them too tight, but you don't want them too loose either. So you want them to still slide around on the needle. Now go ahead and cast on the number of stitches according to the pattern for the size that you chose for your blanket. So I have completed all of my cast on stitches. I do have the correct amount that I need to complete the throw size. And I have this needle, which is the one that I was casting on to. And the yarn is right here is coming from the skein and this is where I clipped it uh, from the center um, since we were using the two-stranded method to cast on. Now, I'm gonna show you the end of the needle. Uh, you wanna follow me. Uh, you wanna take the other needle and we're gonna place some stitches on here. Um, and this is because, remember, this is where we started with. This was our very first um, slip knot that we put onto the needle and we actually don't want to keep that on there. I'm going to go ahead and tell you to take it off just so that we don't forget. You're just going to pull it off the needle and don't worry nothing's going to happen just undo it and you're just going to have the two yarn tails and we'll weave those in at the end. Uh, no worries there. But now uh, go ahead and take those stitches off. We need this needle empty. So I'm gonna keep the empty needle, uh, the one that we just took the slip knot off of. We want that one in our right hand and the empty needle will always go in our right hand. We are going to begin row one and the pattern says to knit one and purl one. And then we repeat that same pattern all the way to the end of the row. Uh, so I'm gonna show you how to do the knit stitch first since that's the first one that we need to complete. So the yarn coming from the skein, um, in my case, it's coming in the front. I actually wanna pull this yarn and we want it behind that needle. So I'm going to go from front to back. You see this stitch here, front to back, and we're gonna have those needles crossed is what it looks like. But this is what it looks like from my view where your needle's just in the middle of it, but then your needles should cross at the end. Now with our yarn, again, you want it in the back of the needle. We're going to yarn over, and if you need to, grab it with your right index finger, and we're going to pull the needle through with that yarn over our right needle. We're gonna pull it through to the front. Go ahead and slide that stitch onto this needle. And then on your left needle, you're going to slide this stitch off. So now we've taken the one, we've taken one stitch off of our left needle, but we've added one to our right needle. So that's how you complete a knit stitch. But in row two, it says to do a knit stitch and then a purl stitch. 
So now I'm going to show you the purl stitch because that's what we do for our second stitch. So to complete a purl stitch, you want your yarn in the front. And just for the sake of this so I can show you, I'm gonna pull that yarn under my thumb. That way you can see this stitch. So rather than going from front to back, which is how we did our knit stitch, we're going to go from right to left. So I'm gonna put my needle in from the right side into the front of the stitch and go to the left. So now my needles should cross this way, but my you should be able to see the right needle in the front. And then again, we're going to yarn over with the yarn in our left hand. And we just want to pull that yarn through. You can go ahead and pull it onto your needle. And then we have to pull this stitch off of our needle and that completes a purl stitch. I'm just gonna pull that one, that one was a little tighter. So whenever you have it on your needle, it might be easier to show you as we add more, but the difference between the knit and the purl stitch, and this is important uh, just to know for future, uh, the knit stitch creates this V. You can see that here. And then that's because the yarn is held in the back whenever you complete the stitch. And then the purl stitch has this bump across uh, the front, which is created by holding the yarn in the front of the needle. So we have our knit stitch and our purl stitch. And I'll show you this a few more times. Uh, so the stitch pattern, we do repeat it. So we started with a knit stitch and purl stitch. Now we're going to add a knit stitch, which means we hold our yarn in the back of the needles. Then we take the right needle, insert it into the front loop on our left needle. We're going to go from front to back and cross them. The right needle should be on the bottom. And then we're going to yarn over. And then if you need to hold it to bring it through, you're gonna bring your yarn to the front. And we have that loop on our needle now. But we have to take that stitch off of our left needle. So now we're left with a knit stitch. And now we're going to do a purl stitch to continue the pattern. So we bring our yarn to the front. I'm gonna hold it out of the way. And then we take our right needle and we're going to go from right to left and insert that one into that loop and your needle on the right side should be in the front. Now we're gonna yarn over, pull that yarn through the loop on our needle and then we're going to pull that stitch off of our left needle, but we put one onto our right needle. So now we have four stitches. So we have the knit stitch, the purl stitch, the knit stitch, a purl stitch. Now we want to continue knitting in the same pattern, repeating the knit stitch and purl stitch until we reach the very end of the row. So I have finished up row one and now I want to switch the empty needle that came from that last stitch and put it in my right hand and now I will hold the needle in my left hand where the working yarn is coming from. So we're going to go on to row two now and we're going to continue the same exact pattern except the stitches are going to switch. So now in row two, it's going to be a purl one, knit one, and then repeat that same exact stitch pattern. So um, that is because whenever we ended with a purl stitch on row one, we flip our work over and now we have a knit stitch on the front. So now we have to, we want opposites on the side to, can, to make the stitch pattern. So we have a knit stitch and again, we want the opposite. So we're gonna make a purl stitch to begin row one. So we're going to hold our yarn in the front and then we have our empty needle in our right hand and we're going to insert the needle from right to left, yarn over, pull that yarn through that loop. We have one stitch on our right hook or needle, I'm sorry, and just pull the other stitch off of the right one. So we made our first purl stitch. So now we want to make a knit stitch. And again, 
If you get confused and you can't remember which one you left off on, look for the bump or the V. The bump is the purl, so that means we want a knit stitch on top of it because we want to alternate. So we have the bump, we want to knit stitch, so insert your needle from front to back, yarn over, pull it through, and then take that loop off of our right needle. And then again, we just completed a knit stitch and we want a purl stitch and we have that knit stitch. So we do want a purl stitch on top because we do want to alternate to create that stitch pattern, which is called the seed stitch. So we have a purl, so we want to complete a knit. We have a knit, we want to complete a purl. So again, we're just gonna continue the same exact stitch pattern uh, all the way down uh, to the end of the row. I have just come to the end of row two, and now you want to continue repeating row one and two for the number of rows that your pattern states for the given size. All right, so I've made it to my very final row of my blanket. So now I want to bind off, which just means that I want to take my needles off of my blanket and get these stitches off of the needles in a way that my blanket will not come unraveled. So I'm going to show you a very simple bind off technique. So we're going to start just like we're knitting a stitch like normal. So the empty needle will be in the right hand and then the needle with the stitches on it where the yarn is coming from the skein will be in my left hand. So I'm just going to tension the yarn like normal and I'm going to knit the first two stitches just like normal. So knit one stitch and then knit two stitches. So every time we want two stitches on our right needle. So I have my two stitches and now what I want to do is I want to take start taking one stitch off at a time. So we do that by bringing the first loop that you knit onto your needle and you're gonna bring that over and off of the needle so that you're left with just the second loop. So let me show you what that will look like. So I'm going to use the u or I'm going to use my left needle. So I insert it into the front of the first stitch like so. And then I'm going to slide my needle or the two stitches to the tip of the needle. And I like to hold my second one just so it doesn't come off. And then you bring this loop over and off of the needles until you just have the second stitch on your needle left and you can see that since we brought that first stitch over it's this loop right here and it makes a little v right now so that was that stitch and that's what it will look like on the edge of your blanket every time you bind off so now we're left with one loop on our needle we want two so i'm going to go to the next stitch on my left needle I'm going to make a knit stitch and again I'm left with two stitches on my right needle and I want to bind one off and so I take the first stitch that I knit and I'm going to bring it over and off of the needle and so I do that with my left needle I insert it into the top or into the front I'm going to slide those stitches closer to the tip. I like to hold that second one with my index finger and then just bring that loop over and off the needle and you've bound off your second stitch. So you can see where that stitch was. It's got that V. That was the loop that we just took off of our needle. So we're left with one loop. Again, we want two loops. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to knit one stitch get two loops on my right needle and then I'm going to take one stitch off very carefully just take it over and off and we have three stitches off you can see that V which is where we just took that loop over and off and then we just continue this process all the way until we have one stitch left so I just have a couple of stitches left and I want to show you what I do whenever I just have two more loops on my right needle. So I'm going to go ahead and knit this very last one and then I have those two. Just 
stitches. And then what you can do is you can uh, yarn over and then just bring the last loop over that one and then just pull that yarn through, which I don't have much, so I can go ahead and just uh, pull this all the way through. Otherwise, you can cut it with a little tail, but then that's going to pull it secure and then you will uh, weave this end in and your blanket will not become or ever come unraveled. So that is how you bind off your blanket and the edging will look similar to this. I made a pretty good progress but I ran out of this skein of yarn. This is all that I have left so I thought I would show you guys how you actually add another skein of yarn because this can be a little intimidating whenever you run out and you don't know how to put it uh, a new one on so that you can continue creating the length in your blanket. So you want to make sure that you have enough yarn here uh, probably six to eight inches maybe a little more um, but that's about how long this piece is. And then we're gonna take our new skein of yarn. I found the end of it. We're just gonna create a new tail and we're gonna uh, put these two together. Uh, so you want the end from your skein of yarn at the opposite end, if that makes sense, uh, just as I'm doing here. So this one's gonna lay, the end is gonna lay on top of our right needle and then the end from our skein of yarn um, that we ran out of, that's going to fall to the back. So now I'm going to just pick up my needles just as I was going to knit. And this again is the yarn from the new skein that I'm adding. And then we have both tails. This one continues because it is from the new skein and then this one's going to end. But now, so we pick up our yarn and I'm just going to hold this one here uh, just so we don't lose it and we're just going to go ahead and continue stitching like normal so I have a purl stitch so to continue the um, the seed stitch or that stitch pattern that we're creating I need to make a knit stitch but this will apply to a purl stitch as well uh, just know that I'm doing a knit stitch right now just because that's the stitch that I need to complete so go ahead and insert my needle uh, for the knit stitch and now we're going to take both of these tails of yarn and we're going to knit them just as if they were one tail. And I'm just going to wrap them around just as if I am going to knit. And then I knit one. And then this is the tail um, that was left from me holding the new skein over. So we can just drop that one now. It won't matter. And now we're going to work these two ends uh, into a couple of more stitches. So I did a knit stitch, now I need to do my purl stitch. And I'm using both ends of the yarn. And I'm gonna do one more, so that's gonna be a total of three stitches that I completed. And we're gonna work with oops, both strands of yarn. You can see that I added three new stitches, but I was holding two strands, which is where I get the two, um, the two loops on these, um, on these, or on the needle. So one thing to remember is that uh, these are worked as one stitch. So as you go back around, make sure that you don't um, accidentally separate them and knit two instead of one because you will be increasing and your blanket will expand. Um, you'll have too many stitches and your blanket might be off. Uh, so just remember that whenever you get back around that you did add a skein and the tails will tell you that as well. So that should be a reminder that these aren't two stitches, just knit them as one. And so now that you added those three, you just pick up your yarn uh, from the skein, from that new skein that you added, and you're just gonna continue knitting as normal. Just continue that stitch pattern, and your blanket will be secure. There's gonna be no holes. Uh, your tails, you don't have to worry about it coming unraveled at all. You kinda knit them in there uh, real tightly with three stitches. They're gonna be 
or they're going to stay there. And then at the end, as our final step, we will weave these in. So it won't matter uh, that you have these tails. Just leave them there for now, and I'll show you what to do with them later. Now we will learn the final step to knitting this blanket, and that is weaving in the ends. So go ahead and grab your tapestry needle and thread it with a loose end. And then whenever you are looking at the stitches, you want to mimic the stitches that are happening. So right here, we have that purl stitch. If you look underneath this one, you can kind of go under this one, just to kind of mimic that. And after you do that, you can see that there is this line. And we want to follow that one. See, and then it follows that one. And I like to go in through that purl stitch, just to kind of hide it. And then we're gonna do that same thing again. So we're gonna follow this one underneath that one. And then I just take it underneath that purl stitch here just to kind of hide it. And you can see it mimics that one, but it's hidden. And we're just gonna continue this process. And then whenever you get through probably about an inch or so, um, uh, you wanna start going the opposite direction so that your long tail can be woven back and forth so that it's harder for the yarn to come undone. So right here, I'm just gonna go up to the next level and you can see that we'll, we wanna follow this one this line right here. So I'm just gonna go up underneath that purl stitch. That's gonna take me to the next row up. So now we wanna find those stitches that we can continue to follow going this way. So we went up through that, but I wanna go underneath so that we can follow that little stitch there. Oops. All right, so you can't see it. Now I like to go back underneath this one here. And then again, we're just gonna follow this one across. Go underneath that. Now continue weaving your yarn in the same way that I have showed you. And whenever you reach about an inch or so in one direction, then turn around and go back the opposite direction. That way you can feel comfortable that your yarn tail is secure inside your blanket and there won't be any fear that your blanket will come unraveled in the middle of So I'm gonna say that that's probably good enough. And so after you've done this a few times back and forth, I just like to stretch both, both sides and you can see that that tail just like kind of flipped right in there. And there's just a little bit of a little uh, piece here. So I'm just going to take my scissors snip it and then just massage that back in and just play with it and it's hidden and you can't even see where you put that tail and that's it you now have a blanket i'm so happy to share my knitting process with you i had a lot of fun with this one and i'm really happy with the reversible texture that is complemented by the bold twisted fringe which again i show in a separate video so i'll link that and you can go watch that now but I think the Arctic Throat is a great addition to any home and it's a great beginner project because you learn many essential knitting skills that set you up for future projects. Plus, it's very rewarding because every time you snuggle up with it, you will be reminded that you made this with your own two hands. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate all of your support and I can't wait to see you guys in the next video.